What's up guys, with GM Knife Falls dropping tomorrow, I thought I'd make a video on character selections, what you can use uh, to maximize your builds. I'm gonna do each class, maybe each subclass, but Arc is kinda eh, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, endgame, at least for Knife Falls. But let's get into it, and uh, I'll try to get everything covered. So I'll start with the artifact. The artifact, the first three bars really don't mean much, it's more of preference, but in my case, I went with anti-barrier smg and sidearm uh unstoppable hand cannon and overload rounds for sidearm and hand cannons this i particularly don't like specifically because it's ars and smgs and if you don't know how this works is basically one bullet in your clip will stun the overload champion so you're just gonna stand there and spray them and hope that it stuns them before they kill you now imagine doing that with a 25 handicap and you're just gonna die 90 percent of the time so not a fan of this mod at least with these guns i would avoid it uh, then the next two trees are basically just preference. They're nothing like either you can use to your advantage. It's like, oh, defeat uh, things with hand cannons and sidearms and you get glimmer. Nothing too crazy, so you can do whatever you want here. So for the fourth column, these are all pretty good perks, but these two specifically are situational, which is why I didn't go for them. So swords, you can use against overload champions, obviously. It's kind of consistent and it's kind of not. If you're doing all level activities, it's fun to use. Uh, however, let's say for Fallen Captains, for example, it's pretty bad where Minotaurs, they just kind of teleport at you, you know, right in your face. You know where they're going to go and you can stun them. Captains, on the other hand, teleport about 400 times around you in a circle while shooting you with Lord of Wolves. So that's not fun. And it takes maybe two to three swings to actually stun the guy if you're under leveled, which, you know, GM Nightfalls, you will be under leveled no matter what. And on top of that, there's going to be other things shooting you. So you're rate of dying with your sword is very likely which is why i would not recommend it for gm uh same thing goes for surge detonators it's better than swords i'll give you that you can use it out of range but again you're playing 50 50 with fallen captains you basically have to wait till they teleport into a spot and then nade that spot with an art grenade to stun them it's it you know it's a coin flip so i would go against it but hey if you like using arc subclasses you know you can go have fun with that you can use it Next we have having the war mind. This is uh, this is player preference, I guess. Basically, it's all right. I can use it. Others might hate it. It, it. Completely up to how people play. So for the last two mods here, I think these are by far the best mods we have for this season. Maybe in any season. If you don't know, these mods go in hand in hand with a combo. Let me show you armor real quick right there on the chest piece. So essentially, what this combo does, if you don't know, is you can use your solar melee, any class, any solar subclass and then stagger an unstoppable champion and what this does it, it will stagger the champion and then give you your melee immediately back with no cooldown so you can use your normal solar melee like let's say on uh well of radiance or you can use something like top tree dawnblade that has a projectile melee that can hit people across the map so in combination with this and using something like Top Tree Dawnblade, you can hit unstoppable champions from a distance while not even having to use an unstoppable hand cannon or any gun for that matter. So you can stun the champion, kill him off, and then you have an extra gun slot to use something else, like let's say anti-barrier SMG. So you have two champion combos to go through for your character instead of having to just be, hey, I'm the unstoppable guy and I can't do anything else. Now you can make a little variety for yourself. That will come in really handy for GM Nightfalls, in my opinion. For the fifth column, Passive Guard, you need a sword. I already discussed swords in the last column. Not really consistent. I wouldn't go for it. Solo of the Praxic Fire is actually pretty underrated in my opinion. I don't have it on in this build specifically because I just wasn't using it, but it actually comes in pretty handy on Warlock specifically. You drop a Rift, Healing, Empowering, whatever, and you gain an Overshield. Not not bad really, considering, you know, being under 25 for GMs. I can see it come in handy, honestly. Tyrant Surge. Pretty, pretty standard if you're running a uh, arc subclass, I would say. But again, I think arc is the weakest one to go into GM with. However, if you are gonna run arc because you're used to it or you just, you know, it's your favorite class, then I would definitely put on Tyrant Search to abuse in GM. Thunder Crawl is pretty generic. I'm sure everyone knows what it does by now. It's more of a PvP thing than PvE. It, you know, not, not for GM. Just not for GM. And then we have Lightning Strikes twice. So basically, what this is is you throw a grenade. And then if you kill targets and stay alive, then it just recharges uh, fairly fast. I'd say you probably, let's say you throw a pulse grenade, you kill like, I don't know, two dregs. You probably get your nade back in about 10 seconds-ish. Maybe a little less, I haven't actually timed it, but it's fairly quick. But again, you need to be on arc. If you run arc, I'd use it. If you don't run arc, 
don't use it because you can't haha <laughs> all right let's move on all right let's move on to weapon suggestions so some of these are meta uh if you don't have them you know not a big deal i'll try to give you a suggestion that's easier to obtain so let's start from the top mountain top get it the top all right you can leave the video now i'm sorry no, uh, Mountaintop is obviously very powerful, it, it, even after it's quote-unquote nerf. Uh, it goes very, very well with Anarchy, but let's just stay to primaries for now. Mountaintop is a top use, is an Aki's Burden, obviously still very, very good, even with the uh, recent reload patch, I guess you can call it. These are basically the top two candidates in terms of this slot. However, if you don't have those, Revoker is also serviceable because you can refund ammo. If you don't have Revoker, you should probably stick to any uh, high impact sniper but if you're gonna run a primary gun like a like a hand cannon or a pulse up here in the slot spare rations uh go figure this raid pulse sacred provenance if you have it it just anything with consistency and damage i really i wouldn't run let's say an auto rifle because they're good in pvp but in pv they don't really do much you just need to stand there for far too long to actually put in some good damage uh, and plus you need to be at range and besides hard light really autos don't have much range the good ones these days anyway like Suros I would not use in this slot I'd stick to a pulse or a hand cannon but if, if you have to stay in distances which you probably will to be honest at 25 handicap I probably go with a pulse if you don't have these power guns that I mentioned all right let's go to energy or the middle slot so recluse is the obvious choice for most people anyway they know it's busted it got a little nerf it's not as busted it's still very very good uh, obviously smgs are half of the anti-barrier things this season the other half being sidearms for sidearms i would have to recommend for solar anyway drang if you don't have one that's fine it's easy to obtain right now just go to the menagerie and put in the ruin combo to get drang and there you go you can use those for overload rounds or on uh not ensemble sorry anti-barrier rounds whichever you prefer you know so you can switch them up for like legendary lost sectors and such for void again this is depending on element because of each strike some of them have you know void shields some may have solar some may have arcs this is just like elemental variety the seraph uh sidearm you can get from the moon bunker i believe also easy to get just do a bounty and boom you're done i just rolled a dragonfly one because it's i think the best perk you can roll on it when you're killing trash mobs again overload rounds or anti-barrier i would probably say overload is better for sidearms because it, you just there's about 20 bullets 10 to 20 bullets and you can actually stun the champion as opposed to running an auto rifle with 49 bullets and them just killing you before you get halfway through the clip and then finally for arc last hope also very generic you can get it from random engrams in the world get it from rahul not very hard to get Again, anti-barrier or overload, whichever you prefer, but I think uh, overload is better for the most part. But anti-barrier, in terms of between recluse and sidearm, sidearms do win, I think, in terms of burst damage to take down a shield. However, obviously you need to be very close with a sidearm, and being very close in GM Nightfalls is probably going to be a death. So, there you go. Then there's just generic stuff like Hard Light, uh, Nation of Beasts ignore fourth horseman that is going to be garbage in gm nightfalls uh other than that you know if you don't have access to these weapons for some reason and you can't run like menagerie or you don't have bits to unlock this that bunker to get that sidearm just run anything with a uh with an element that you think would be good in the specific nightfall that it is for the week and you'll be fine all right, so for power weapons, I don't think I need to explain that Mountaintop and Anarchy go hand in hand together. But if you don't know, Anarchy is pretty busted, all things considered. You get a ton of ammo with it if you go to Tribute Hall and load up for ammo before launching anything. I think it's 26 shots generically, which is insane. Uh, the gun is insane on its own. You stick something with two Anarchy shots and it just ticks for damage nonstop. That's actually really helpful against champions if you didn't know. You can stick an anti-barrier with it then they'll load up their shield you break the shield anarchy will still be ticking for damage even if after you break the shield it doesn't just stop doing the damage so that's really handy especially considering let's say izanagi where you know you shoot the champion 
their shield pops up, but you haven't reloaded yet because your reload takes eight hours. You have to switch to your other gun, break the shield. Your shield's gonna be broken, but then you have to reload your gun still, and you might just run out of time for damage on GM especially. Whereas Anarchy doesn't give a damn about that. You shoot your target, they put up the shield, you break the shield, you're still doing damage, then you mount on top of them in the face. Which is why I think Anarchy will be more consistent than anything going to GM Nightfalls. And then you got some just uh, sleeper picks other than that. You know, you have obviously have Whisper, you have Wardcliffe. Uh, I think an LMG will be very good for this, or for some of the GM Nightfalls anyway. I think the uh, Seven Seraph LMG is going to come in handy, especially this role. I think it might be very good to use since you're going to be not hiding, I guess, but keeping distances a lot, firing line with your teammates against trash mobs might come really handy because you got to clear everything. Otherwise, you might get overwhelmed. Uh, also, Wendigo could come in clutch, not just for burst damage, but also for the blinding nades effect, where if you get surrounded by a bunch of enemies, you can blind them and then try to get away. And of course, then you have like 1k voices. I don't think I need to go into why 1k is good. It's a really solid gun. Just depends on the situation and how to use it, if there's a proper way to use it in GMs. But any of these guns really are solid. You know, heavies are for the most part are pretty pretty solid to do for damage you just gotta know what your preference is and that's all so those are my gun suggestions uh, I will move on to classes next all right let's start with the warlock so like I mentioned I don't recommend arc at least for GM but for the sake of argument I'll give you a recommendation if you were to use arc and I would go with top tree stormcaller has arc web has ionic blink as uh, transcendence and chain lightning I would go with a pulse or storm grenade for PVE and then I would go with Healing Rift for GM. And if you care, Burst Glide for the jump. Then for Void, I would recommend the Devour Void Lock build, which is the bottom tree. Same thing, Burst Glide, Healing Rift. And then Scatter Grenade is probably the best for bur uh, burst damage, but I would go between Scatter and Vortex, whichever you prefer. And then for Solar, surprisingly, I would not go with Well of Radiance. I think Well. Don't get me wrong, Well is busted, but on GM, if you're going to pop Well, it's probably going to be only for boss, and I don't think the boss is you're going to be your main concern for running Well. You know, if you only need it for the boss, I don't think you really need it. And like I mentioned earlier with the, the uh, Unstoppable combo, I think Top Tree Dawnblade complements it well. You get insane mobility with your uh, dodge and your dashes, and then you can use your melee at range to stun un Unstoppables. You don't risk getting killed by them. You don't need to run a hand cannon to stop them. You can run, like I mentioned, anti-barrier or overload, so you can have a double combo with that. So that's why I picked Top Tree Dawnblade. And then I picked Solar Grenade, Healing Rift, Burst Glide. Let's go to Titan next. Alright, I totally didn't forget to include Exotic Armor before I got off the Warlock. Totally did not. Let's ignore that. Let's move on. Okay, so, Exotics that I would recommend for Warlocks. Crown of Tempest, if you're running Stormcaller, really good. Top tree, it extends your super for a very long time. Great. Nezrak Sin. A lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, don't know the fact that this procs on any void kill, period. Not just void supers and abilities, void period. So, if you put on Nezrak Sin and you're running Recluse, which is void, guess what? You get more energy. Very, very helpful. Super underrated. I would definitely run this if you're not a Luna faction well boy. We'll be on. Verity's Brow is actually uh, kind of good now as well. If you're a grenade user, I would recommend using this as well. You can do some uh, pretty neat stuff with that. That's, well, that's about it for that exotic anyway. Moving on. A lot of these are not usable anymore. We're just going to ignore that. Ha ha ha. Phoenix Protocol. Obviously very good with well. You know, it used to be super, super busted in the Reckoning days. I, I'm sure people still remember that. And yes, I know uh, like these are like busted in certain situations I, I i don't want to recommend that those are like super super situational that will probably get people killed and finally you have the obvious luna faction boots for reload transversive steps also is good that's player preference between those two and i mean if you run chaos reach for some reason yeah geomags is the play but luna factions it comes down to luna factions and nezraxon in my opinion those are like the two the two top for me anyway in terms of uh, versatility. This for reload and this for just regening your stuff. And that's it for Warlock. Let me do Titan as well since I'm here. For Titan, if you're doing top tree arc, for a striker, 
and someone will squat for it if you don't know you throw your grenade you kill some enemies you see a bunch of thrall you go shoulder charge them in the face and then you get all your grenade energy back it gives you a ton if you kill like five thralls you get like a full grenade and then some when you're uh, obviously holding two slots because of a uh, top tree when i mask I, I don't think i need anything to say on this when i mask is when i mask you could still run it it'd be fine doom fan pauldron of course for sentinel because it's busted Synthesaps could be busted, but kind of risky in in this scenario. So up to you. Uh, then we got Actium War Rig. That depends on your build, of course, specifically for uh, autos and LMGs. I believe it is now. They changed it from just being one thing. Crest, uh, Forbes. That's that's pretty much it. Just Orbs. Hollow Fire Heart also works for uh, solar builds if you choose to go that route. Lion Rampants obviously is the the staple, I guess, in PVE. You know, make your jump super, super obnoxious. Uh, surprisingly, Dune Marcher is actually really usable in PVE. They're really stupid in PvP, but also usable in PVE. Fun fact, if you run Dune Marchers and you use Burning Maul and you throw your hammer at an enemy, Dune Marchers will actually proc. So that's really silly and dumb, but it works. And the Eventus Wards, super obnoxious. Slide everywhere, build super energy. I hate it so much, but you can abuse it. And then let's go to Hunters. Celestial Nighthawk. I don't think anything needs to be said. Bottom tree, uh, Golden Gun, Nighthawk, kill target, bam, dead. I think it'll do probably about 60% damage to a champion on um, GM settings. Currently in the Master Nightfall, if you're 1030 on level, it actually kills the champion entirely. I'm thinking at negative 25 would probably put it down to about 60%, something around there. Still really powerful though, so there you go. Warm Husk for healing, that's fairly obvious. Then you got Shards of Galanor. If you're running Blade Brush for some reason, you clear up a bunch of trash mobs, you get some super energy back. Just use that to your advantage. I would kind of recommend Liar's Handshake and kind of not, you know, if for some reason you're running Arc Strider, you might want to try to go for the one-two punch build, but again, one-two punch is really, really risky when you're 25 under in the Nightfall. Same thing, Arc Strider, Radiant Flux, extends your super. That's fairly obvious. I don't think I need to go further than that. And then we have the Old Faithful Orpheus Rigs. Even though they butchered it a couple of times now, it's still really powerful. You get half your super back. That is a lot. Still getting half back is a lot. I don't know why people complain about that. That's pretty much it. Stompies is just like, uh, me, my jumping sucks. It, this helps me, but I don't really recommend it. I would definitely go with Orpheus Rigs if you're void. And uh, there's really no like, there's no number one standing out. You know, it's very class specific. It's probably down to Nighthawk and Rigs as like the, the top spot, depending which build you use. And again, I would recommend Solar or Void, not Arc. So whichever you want to go with, pick that. And that's all the exotics. Let's get back to the regular build stuff. All right, so for Titans, again, I don't recommend Arc, but if you're running Arc, I would run Top Tree, not Bottom Tree. I know Bottom Tree, the super is really busted. It's really good. The reason I would recommend Top Tree is to use your nades. In this case, Pulse Nades, you would get two nades instead of one, and you could use these for overload champions if you're in a pinch. You know, if you're gonna go with Arc, you might as well get two nades instead of one, right? Then you have uh, Towering. I think Towering would be better. Rally might come in handy depending on the situation, but I think Towering is more for protection. And then Strafe Lift, at least for me. I know other people like Catapult, but Strafe, screw it. For this, I would go actually for Middle Tree, for Void, Sentinel. I really like Control of Demolition. It's really, really powerful in PvE if you know how to use it. Uh, it just, it everything explodes. That's the best way to describe it. Everything explodes. I don't think you're gonna need Weapons of Light. You know, again, if the boss is your main problem, I don't think you need extra damage to kill him. If you like, if you clear everything else, you know what I mean? Then the boss won't be a problem for you anyway. So I would recommend survival over more DPS. And then in terms of running void, I would definitely recommend uh, Doomfang Pauldron if you have them. And then for solar, finally, I would actually recommend the middle tree, Burning Maul. There's a couple of reasons why. One. The throwing hammer it's really really fun it's stupid and it's fun and obviously you can use the combo that i mentioned on warlock which is this one for unstoppable champions you just boink them with the hammer you get your hammer back 
also you get an extra hammer on the floor, so it's actually kind of funny. But you stun the champion, you kill him, rinse, repeat, you have unlimited hammers basically against unstoppable champions. Then there's also a little unknown thing that people don't know. If you pop Burning Maul on an anti-barrier champion and you press your, uh, your heavy attack, you can stagger them unlimited amount of times and they'll never put up their barrier shield because they keep getting staggered by Burning Maul and eventually you will kill them. On GM, uh, you might not kill them flat out by yourself, but you will definitely stagger them enough for your teammates to just annihilate them instantly. This definitely works on uh, the Hobgoblin anti-barriers. You might need a little more help with the uh, the Colossal anti-barriers because they're, you know, they're chunky boys. But that's a really hidden gem that most people don't know about. So there you go. Again, Strafe, Towering, and Thermite Nades. Thermite Nades are pretty nuts in case you don't know. So that's Titans and let's go to Hunters. So here we are with Hunters. Again, I don't recommend Arc, but if you're going to go with Arc, I'll still give you a recommendation. I think the play would be Bottom Tree Arc Strider. And my reasoning mainly behind this is that uh, when you're damaged, I believe when your shields go down, if I remember correctly, you get to recharge your abilities faster. So, you know, your uh, your grenade, your melee, your dodge, yada yada, would come back faster. And in GM Nightfalls, you know, you're probably going to get hit a lot and go into that red bar section. So at least you get your uh, ability charges back faster on bottom tree. And that's pretty pretty much the only advantage I see in using Arc Strider, honestly. If you have to pick a nade, I'd probably pick Arc Bolt or Skips. Uh, either dodge is fine, I just have it on Gamblers. And then Triple Jump. Alright, let's go to Void. Now, Void is an interesting case, honestly. Void, I think you can get away with doing either bottom tree or top tree. They both have their advantages. One tree has the advantage of, you know, having a large continuous tether. You just plop on the ground and everything will walk into it and you get a ton of energy back. And then the other build, you can spam tether, but it makes you more vulnerable to getting hit. But it has the massive advantage of being able to smoke you and your teammates and then you're able to continuously chain it by dodging in front of enemies while still invis, getting your nade back again, and then if needed, you invis your entire team again to get through certain sections where you might die or, you know, be up against the wall with a champion staring down in front of you. So either build is honestly really good and the go-to. Obviously, if you go with the big tether, you put on Orpheus Streaks. If not, you could probably get away with Graviton Forfeit, honestly. So uh, I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys. Those are my uh, two recommendations for Void, actually. And then you have, obviously, Void Wall Grenade, Ether Dodge again, and you have Strafe Jump or Triple Jump. I would just stick the Triple Jump, honestly. And then for Solar, I think the choice is fairly obvious. You just go with Bottom Tree for Nighthawk, because Nighthawk is extremely powerful. It can mow down enemies. It'll probably take down champions in two hits. So at least you get 50-60% off in one hit with a Nighthawk, and then maybe a Nagi Shot. We'll finish him off from your teammate and uh that's it there's there's really no other choice I, at least in my opinion i don't think top tree is valuable in gm and blade barrage the only redeeming quality would probably be shards of gallinor so you can kill trash mobs and then get some super back but the main goal will probably be to kill the yellow bars that are standing in your way you know so bottom tree swarm nade or trip mine up to you uh, incinerator is actually not bad either it's it's a toss up really for grenade triple jump and then any dodge i have this one on for reload and in terms of uh character builds that is it uh gm nightfalls launch tomorrow and once i complete it i will try to have a guide out for like positioning and builds and things like that for i think it'll be inside terminus if the rotation stays correct so we'll have to see and find out but that'll be that so stay tuned for that video if you want to see a layout of the strike itself and uh if you guys enjoy this uh, a like and a sub would be appreciated and i'll catch you guys next time and I'm going to end the video with some combo clips, examples for unstoppable melees, things like that. And here they are. Enjoy it.